Hey folks, how y'all doing? Welcome back at Old Man in the Land of Grills. Oh, there it is. Meatloaf on the PK. Let's get going. All right, folks, let's just go in with our no pan smoked meatloaf, folks. I've done this a whole bunch of times, and uh, I, I try and keep it pretty consistent. I, I do change it up a little bit, but I'm consistent with the meat, at least. I always like to use 90-10. I got two pounds of 90-10. One pound of uh, Johnsonville, and I'm using sweet Italian sausage this time. I usually use mild. Don't use hot. It'll overpower it, and it's all, it'll taste like that. Uh, I've got my onions, and uh, I've got my celery. I'll do a half a cup of each. I've got two, ba two eggs that are beaten. Uh, now, <laughs> here's where it gets a little strange. I like to put a little of this My Ploy sweet chili sauce in there. Not a lot, but just a little bit. And then uh, just to give it a little bit of kick, tiger sauce. <laughs> made with real tigers. And then I season on the inside, folks, not on the outside. So I got some of this Farm 407. Got a lot of pepper in there. This stuff is really good. And then just uh, a little bit of this uh, Burn Pit Barbecue All Ration. A little bit of sugar in there. Also, cheese. Now I got about a half a cup there. That's what I'm going to use. You're going to say, why cheese and meatloaf? And uh, a lot of this will cook out, but what it, it adds moisture so you don't get a, a dried out meatloaf. And then instead of using breadcrumbs, one pack of Ritz crackers, this is the garlic. So we're gonna mix that all together in a bowl and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. All right, so just a tip about mixing. I do a several mixing, so I mix the meat first and I'm just using my hands, wash them real good first and wash them in between. And then my celery and my onion with my seasonings and I'll mix again. And then my wet product is gonna go in and I'll mix again. And then the cheese will go in and it'll mix again. And uh, then at that point, then I'll do a half a pack of the Ritz, see how it is. Don't add them all at once. And then if I need the rest of the pack, I'll add the rest of the pack. So keep on going here. All right, so that's what it looks like without the crackers. And the uh, reason I stopped here is because people are asking, well, how do you put the crackers in? You just put them like this or do you put them in a food processor? Yeah, I, I do. It's called my hands. And I just crunch them up just like that. And there's some little bits in there, but it's okay. So I will mix these up and give you a look-see. All right, so I've transferred into another stainless steel. You can use whatever stainless steel bowl you've got. Spray the inside with Pam. This is going in the freezer. You see, yep, the freezer for about 15, 20 minutes just to get it crusted over. Then I'm going to show you how we're going to release it, put it on a cooking mat, indirect smoked. Oh, man, on the grill. It's going to be awesome. All right, here's the setup on the PK, folks. We've got our charcoal basket in here. I did put two starter cubes in there. I've got a pie pan over there. It's a little bigger than eight inch, eight and three quarters. It'll be perfect for kitchen and grease. Uh, I've got a couple little chunks of oak that apparently were whiskey barrels that were given to me. And we'll put a couple more in there too. So we'll just see see how that does. Then the grate's gonna go on and our meatloaf is gonna go on there. Charcoal's gonna be there. It's gonna be indirect cook with the uh, bottom vent underneath the charcoal open. Top vent closed. Bottom vent under the meat closed. Top vent over the meat open. And that'll allow that smoke and heat to rise. This thing, I'll tell you what, why don't you get this aluminum tub on the PK heated up this thing is a cooking machine and it loves, 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 low and slow. 225 is this sweet spot for this girl, folks. Uh, and we'll show you that. All right, smoke's cup starting to roll. I got a couple more of those chunks. I got chunks on the bottom, chunks on the top. Uh, what I like about the PK here is that they have, the grate is removable and you can just take it off. That way you're, you can be a little bit higher with your uh, your chunks and your wood there. I did put a little water in the, in the uh, pie pan, not so much for moisture, but just to catch the grease dripping so they don't burn and give up, not the taste you want. All right, so there's our, our cooking mat. I did spray that with some Pam so it doesn't stick. As long as you're not over direct heat, that'll work. 20 minutes in the freezer, I got a little bit of crust. I've taken uh, like a pie knife here that's real flexible and uh, loosened it up kinda. And here, moment of truth, here, here we go. Look at that. Bacon weave on top of that, onto the grill. And there it is, there is, see, I didn't mean that's before, it's cooked even, that's some nice looking meatloaf. And then a little bit more of this uh, burnt pit barbecue, all ration. there's just a little bit of sugar in there. So that'll crystallize real nice on there, onto the PK it'll go. All right, about 10 minutes into it, smoke's rolling, just wanted to show you that, I got uh, bottom vent wide open, top vent wide open obviously, over the charcoal closed, below the food closed, the meatloaf. And then our temp gauge on the side here, it's just saying 150. It'll come up a little bit. We'll uh, keep on watching. 225, folks. This, I tell you what, the PKs are a cooking machine at 225. And you get that aluminum tub totally heated up. 
and it just dials itself in. So right now, I'm still got the vents. As you can see, the vent over the charcoal closed, vent underneath the charcoal wide open, vent underneath the food closed, and vent over the food wide open. That smoke and heat are rolling right around and through there. Uh, right now, I'm gonna leave it like that because there's some rain expected. And uh, you know, if I have to adjust it down a little bit, I'll adjust it down a little bit. All right, so like I said, it's gonna rain. We had a pretty decent rain shower just come through. And you see, lost a little bit, but five degrees maybe. She'll bounce right back up. Left the uh, vents open just for that reason. Uh, I am under a little bit of a overhang. So that is helping out. All right, folks, two hours into it, 275. I've loved everything just the way it was. I haven't looked at it since. We're gonna look at it together. Let's take a quick look. Two hours into the meatloaf. Oh man, will you look at that? Oh, uh, we're gonna take a temp of this and see how it's doing. Uh, we might be getting close to being done. So, um, get the cover backed up. Give you a look-see. All right, let's take an internal. Man, that's looking good. Go right down through the center here. I want you to be able to see too. All right, you can see right there, 130. We got 30 degrees to go yet. So keep on going, give you a look-see. All right, let's take a look. Uh, we're about four hours, a little over four hours. Make sure you can see it too. Right in the middle. Yeah, that's ready to come off. One other spot, oh, right there. Whoa, very done there. So take the uh, meatloaf off and we'll give you a look-see once it's plated up. Well, you look at that, meatloaf with a smoke ring. I'll tell you what, <laughs> that is pretty awesome. I got a little, little bit here for you folks. I'm gonna take a taste test. There ain't nothing dry about that. Very juicy. A meatloaf, no pan. Folks, <laughs> hope you try this. Super simple to do. Remember, if I can do it, so can you. Thumbs up, leave a comment, and as always, thanks for watching.